We're here back at 3D Experience World 2020 at the playground again. And uh, you know, I wanted to drop in, check out what's happening with NVIDIA. I have David here. Hey, David. Hey. How thanks, are you? Thanks for taking a couple of uh, minutes to talk with us about NVIDIA. Absolutely. Now, uh, I love NVIDIA. I've used NVIDIA for a long time, since I was really little when you first came out with GPUs, graphics cards yeah. for you know high power gaming, and then as a professional using the Quadro cards uh, for you know high power workstations so I can get my job done. Yep. Now we were talking earlier, and you were saying that Nvidia is a lot more than just a graphics card company. Yeah, you guys that's are right. actually like a platform company. Exactly. So um, you know we still drive those beautiful visuals that you're used to that you love. Uh, you know, graphics is still still a huge part of what we do. Um, but you know, starting maybe 10, 15 years ago, we really uh, pivoted to become more of a platform company. So what I mean by that is, in addition to uh, to doing the rendering, the real time rendering that you've seen and that you love, uh, we've also added a bunch of other tools. And not only do we support them in hardware, but we've built whole SDKs so that um, so that developers uh, um, can can leverage them, can use them in their products. So let me tell you what I mean by that. Okay. Um, so for example, uh, in SolidWorks Visualize, uh, we have real time ray tracing uh, with AI denoising. All of that is happening on our GPUs, right? So now we're doing ray tracing on the GPUs. So we have, you know, dedicated what we call RT cores with our new RTX hardware, um, and those that those little ray tracing engines are making these photoreal images. And then we're using uh, AI and deep learning to denoise those images as they're being generated in real time. Wow. Right. So in addition to kind of standard OpenGL graphics, which we continue to accelerate, we now do ray tracing, we do denoising, um, we've been making, uh, uh, showing off some great, great demos and been in the press a lot around um, self-driving cars, uh, basically applying deep learning to uh, robotics and autonomous machines. Um, so it's just kind of blowing up, it's everywhere, right? Wow. And all this is being powered by, by the GPU, which is really an accelerated computing platform. Yeah, so it, it sounds like what I'm used to with the NVIDIA brand is being able to work harder. But what you're saying is now with NVIDIA, you're working harder with the GPUs, but also smarter, because now you have like this, this sort of AI denoising and all these other sort of things that are happening yeah. uh, you know, underneath the surface, let's say. All these you other know. tools for the ISVs to leverage. Great, and what, yep. you know, I know you have a booth here. You were showing off some VR stuff earlier and that sort of thing, and, and that was sort of leveraging uh, some of that technology in Visualize or e-drawings. Yeah, exactly. So we're showing off eDrawings, uh, eDrawings Pro with the VR capabilities. That's new. Um, and so that's running on our GPU. It looks great. Uh, and so there's two points to that demo. One is um, eDrawings Pro does great VR, right? Everyone yeah. should use that. Um, but point number two is, uh, is the NVIDIA, sort of new NVIDIA technology with that, which is um, we sort of cut the cord. So traditionally, when you drive a VR experience, um, you have a tether that goes right into the GPU. Uh, that way we can drive a, a really low latency, immersive, powerful experience. Um, but no one likes that cord. No one wants to be tethered to their That's workstation. Right. Yeah. You know, it's not always the case that you can be within 15 feet of your, your workstation. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's in the data center, um, up in the cloud. And so what we're showing off is something called Cloud XR. Cloud XR is NVIDIA's platform for XR streaming, AR and VR, wow. where we can stream a XR experience from the cloud down to an all-in-one headset or uh, um, a tablet for an AR experience or, a, um, or even, as we're showing here, uh, a, a headset, um, an HTC Vive Pro, that's tethered to a thin and light laptop and that laptop normally would not be VR ready, isn't capable of driving VR, um, but because the VR rendering is happening on a you know, RTX server in the cloud, we can stream those pixels and then decode them locally. Right, so wow. we basically yeah. just freed up all of the XR users of the world to do XR everywhere. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, for a while you were seeing this kind of VR ready on you know every box of anything high performance you would buy. Yeah, and it sounds like again working smarter, not necessarily harder, means that you can offload that rendering to the cloud and you can still get that same low latency and get the same great VR experience without needing a necessarily a VR ready machine or that sort of thing. So yeah, there's a great machine. utilization story, right? There's a lot of users. A lot a lot of SolidWorks users who have P1000s at their desks, right? Yeah. And so now that can be a VR computer for them. They have to connect to uh, a big B3 server in the back room, but all of those users now can access VR. 
Yeah, and the P1000 is a, a great uh, card anyway. Uh, it's a but great, great GPU, but not typically at that at level, level of VR, VR ready, right? Absolutely. So, yeah. wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Well, thanks so much, David, for uh, spending some time with us. If people want to get more information about this, where can they go? So, um, they should just go straight to NVIDIA.com and search on CloudXR. Okay. Well, thank you, David. We really appreciate it. Absolutely. It's my pleasure.